Welcome to St. David's. Uh, we are so glad that you're here this morning because uh, we get to celebrate a baptism this morning. Uh, it's always a wonderful way to start the week, celebrating baptism. So uh, thank you for being here on Clara's important day. Uh, we'd like to welcome any visitors. Uh, we are happy to have you. Uh, the bulletin uh, has everything that you need except for the hymns. So um, you can use the blue hymnal that's in the pew back in front of you uh, to look up the hymns. And we encourage everybody uh, to sing along with us. Um, for all of you who are joining us online, you can find our full bulletin on the front page of our website, stdavids.net. Please stand as we sing our opening Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God calls to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father, the Lord be with you. Also Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings, and the children are invited to Children's Chapel. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you 
and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 4 together in unison. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and they thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look in my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for the ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my wounds that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. To this we are witnesses. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. On any given day, uh, actually, let's just say on most days, I will be minding my own business only to have a child run in from another room in the house, frantically upset and wanting to air their grievances about one of their siblings. And more often than not, before they can even explain what they're upset about, the other, that sibling they're complaining about comes running into the room to argue their case. This is my life. I judge Judy, basically, all the time. Hearing cases of fraud and theft, you know, people looking at others, you know, with annoying looks on their faces, playing with toys that someone forgot they owned, but now they, of course, really want it. These are the kinds of, of things that we argue about. And in hearing these desperate pleas for justice, it becomes clear that whatever usually was the source of the altercation or the disruption, um, no one is innocent in, this, in all of these scenarios. As they tearfully describe all the things that their sibling has done, each of them, of course, minimizes their own role, minimizes the things that they have done. And so it's my role to discern blame, to figure out who started it. And who is to blame? Well, really, most often, everyone is to blame. They're all uh, to blame. See, now that we are past Easter and we're on the other side of the crucifixion, we have that question, right? Who do we blame for all of that? Who was the cause of Jesus' death? Pilate, Pontius Pilate, a representative of the Roman government, he was the one who handed out the order that was carried out by Roman soldiers. So maybe it was them. Pilate had asked, shall I crucify your king? And eventually the text tells us that he handed him over to them to be crucified. 
But if we back up a little bit, we hear Pilate actually attempt to release Jesus repeatedly and argue with those who turned him over. When he asked, shall I crucify your king? It was the religious leaders who said, we have no king but the emperor. They were the ones who took him to Pilate and requested this punishment in the first place. So maybe they have the ultimate blame. But then blame can always be shifted to Judas. I mean, he was the one who handed Jesus over to his opponents. If only we can figure out who to blame, who to give responsibility for the crucifixion. If only we can point to, you know, that that responsible party. In the book of Acts, the apostles, they're beginning their work. The early church is just kind of starting beginning the mission of spreading the word about Jesus. And one day, Peter and John, they're going to the temple, and one of the regular beggars who was crippled from birth, he was sitting at the gate and asking for money. But Peter doesn't give him any money. Instead, gives him the gift of healing. He says to the man, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And miraculously, he does. So this, of course, sparks curiosity that this man that everyone has seen, everyone knows to be unable to walk, can now stand and walk and jump. And so this crowd starts to gather around Peter and John, and it's here that Peter uses this opportunity to give the most uplifting, encouraging message. He addresses the crowd saying, but you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life. Like I said, uplifting and encouraging sermon, right? Peter says, and now friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. You killed the author of life. Now, there's no reason to think that these people were the same crowd that shouted to Pilate, crucify him. While the particular event in Acts, from our reading, it it happens at the temple, this event happened a good time after the events of Christ's death. It simply says, one day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. So it seems like a little bit of a stretch. So why is Peter casting blame on these folks for the rejection of Jesus? Over the course of Holy Week, we journeyed through the story of Jesus, through the entry into Jerusalem, his betrayal, his arrest, his trial, and his death. And twice during Holy Week, on Palm Sunday and also Good Friday, we read through the whole passion story. And both times the congregation, all of you, were invited to take on the part of the crowd, the ones who shouted, crucify him. Seems odd. Why is it the tradition of the church to connect current day people to the tragedy of the cross? I mean, you weren't there, so it seems like a bit of a stretch. But it is here that we begin to understand the fullness of the resurrection. Through acknowledgement of our own responsibility and the separation between God and God's creation, it leads to our own lives being raised from the dead. So perhaps Peter can, can be of help a little bit. Not only in these words that he preached to the crowd, but in Peter's history. Because on the night before Jesus was handed over, just after the institution of the Lord's Supper, Jesus tells the disciples that one of them is going to betray him. So there's this argument that ensues. And Peter says, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus says, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times, three times that you know me. Jesus, knowing this, then told Peter, 
when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So we fast forward to this story in Acts of Peter healing a beggar at the temple and this speech to the crowd. And Peter then tells them, repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you. It is out of his own experience that he tells of redemption. It's out of his own journey of turning back, of repentance and refreshment through Jesus Christ. It sounds like he's just heaping blame on them, but he doesn't seek to blame others. His message doesn't remove blame from himself either by putting it on others. It is the recognition of, of what Jesus offers from his own experience. He says, you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses. We are witnesses. Peter and the other disciples are witnesses to culpability and redemption. Not just because they were there, they were present for the events, To this they are witnesses, to the grace of God brought about through the resurrection. The truth is that Christ came into a world broken and disordered. The state of creation, the entirety of this estrangement from humanity, from the maker of all things, led ultimately to the cross. And no one is innocent. As Paul says in Romans, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Relationship counselors, uh, they'll often talk about the importance of using I statements instead of you statements. You know, saying, uh, I feel, by saying that, you, you take ownership of your perspective and it helps the other person to not feel like you're wagging your finger at them. Uh, I think Peter maybe could have benefited from a little relationship counseling. I don't know. Telling, you killed the author of life. I guess it worked for him. Um, But maybe some we statements could remove this idea of particular blame and help to hear the fullness of what Peter is saying. We killed the author of life, whom God then raised from the dead. And to this, we are witnesses. So repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The cross is not the end. The story is not complete without resurrection. Now, we travel through a season of Lent leading up to Easter, which is a time of penitence and reflection not just to be sad all the time, but so that we might know the sheer magnitude of forgiveness on this other side of Easter. Acknowledgement of our own culpability, our own estrangement from God, it leads us to new life. In Peter and in his message, it lies the invitation to die to the old self and to be raised to new life with Christ. Again, going back to Romans, it says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This morning, we get to celebrate a baptism. We're celebrating just this very thing. Not inviting them into a community that is built around guilt and shame and blame, but one that expresses the sheer magnitude of God's forgiveness. Peter knows this to be true because he is already a recipient of God's forgiveness. To this, he is a witness. Through the resurrection, Peter was redeemed, given new life, and invited to take part in Christ's work in the world. And at that last supper, Jesus told him, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Peter, who denied Christ three times, has 
turned back and witnesses to the redemption found in Christ. He has become an agent of redemption, taking part in healing of the world. On Sunday mornings, we are supposed to come here uh, for church, but uh, really what we come here for is to hear the good news. And when one of our readings says something like, you killed the author of life, most of us would not automatically hear that as good, pleasant, or comfortable news. So what is the good news for today? You, like the crowd listening to Peter, are invited into the wideness of God's forgiveness. Not through guilt, not through blame, but encouraged to turn to God so that your sins might be wiped away. Because that's what God does. Once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers and sisters. Once you have seen and known and felt the power of God's forgiveness, you are invited to be agents of forgiveness to others. To this, we are witnesses. Amen. Okay, the kids, you can come up and get a good view. Sit right here on the floor if you'd like to. <laughs> okay, y'all ready? The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? To all of you here, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person and her life in Christ? We will. I invite you to stand as we renew our baptismal covenant together. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, my Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. And through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, and by it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Clara, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Clara, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, good job. Good job. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you did great. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these servant, this servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying together, we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim her resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. I present to you the world's newest Christian. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning. So you have a little announcement insert in your bulletin, and I just want to point out a, a few things. Uh, we had the joy this morning of welcoming a, a guest for our faith formation class, uh, and they were from Threads of Blessings. Uh, and we talked about how um, they have kind of been a blessing to our space for a while now. We have many pieces of this amazing needlework throughout the campus, uh, including our church and school banners. Um, and if you want to go and look at some of that work, uh, there's still some over in McAllister uh, after the service. Um, and it's this wonderful ministry where uh, these women in Uganda make these incredible pieces out of needlework. And so uh, and they sell these pieces, and it goes towards all sorts of things, for like education, um, and really uh, benefits their community in such a great way. So thank you all for joining us this morning uh, and, and talking about your ministry. Um, next week, another guest speaker for our formation hour. Uh, it's the Reverend Canon John Peterson. Uh, he is the former Secretary General of the Anglican Communion. That probably means absolutely nothing to the vast majority of you, uh, but basically he was the executive director of sorts uh, for the entire Anglican Communion. Um, and so uh, it's really going to be fascinating to hear from him next week. So I invite you to come to breakfast and formation at 9 o'clock next week, uh, and we'll uh, hear from him. If you walk down this hallway, you'll see some artwork on the, on the wall there. Um, you may have done Stations in the Cross at, at church before, um, and kind of in a celebration of, of Easter being a season and not just one day, uh, we have Stations of the Resurrection. And so there's some pieces up there for you to uh, look at, and then there's also little devotions. If you use the QR code in the corner, uh, it'll give you devotions for that. So I invite you to look at that. Those will be up through, uh, through the season of Easter. Today, uh, at the end of the service, we'll be sending out uh, our, all our group that uh, goes to Town Twin Village. Um, and this uh, might be the last one of those that we do for a while. They're kind of changing uh, what they're asking us to do. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who have participated in our Town Twin uh, Village ministry, and that will continue, but maybe just in a little bit different iteration. And then lastly, uh, our bishop's visitation is coming up uh, on Mother's Day, actually. Um, and if you have not been confirmed or received into the Episcopal Church, uh, we're going to have some classes leading up to that uh, that day for confirmation and reception. Um, official membership in the Episcopal Church is through baptism, confirmation, or reception. So uh, if you would like to take part in those classes to be confirmed, or maybe you've already been confirmed and you just want a refresher, uh, we'd love to have you. So, so come and, and join those confirmation classes. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? No? Yeah. Other people always out you whenever. We have two, two birthdays. Okay, let us pray for our birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. For those of you who are visiting, uh, we are about to take part in communion. Um, and all members of the body of Christ are uh, invited to come and take communion. Uh, so when you're invited by the ushers to come to the rail, you can put your hands out like this, uh, and I'll give you a wafer, and you can either eat the wafer and drink from the chalice, or hold on to your wafer uh, and dip it in the chalice as it goes by. And if you don't feel comfortable taking communion with us, we still invite you to come forward, and you can let us know that you would like a blessing uh, instead of communion by putting your arms over your chest like that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming and glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with David and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. I invite our Town Twin Village ministry to come up. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for those who answer the call to serve to those who are in need. We pray that as we send this group out to minister to those at Town Twin Village, Lord, that you would send all of us out to serve those less fortunate than ourselves. We pray that you would bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Life is short, and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I enjoyed serving with you. I'm going to go take this off and go to Town Twin Village now. I will see you next Sunday. Yeah. <laughs>